Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Kidlit Joy, and today we are going to start talking about the Children's Book Council shortlisted books for 2024. We're going to be starting with the Picture Book of the Year category. So just like last year, this series is going to feature each of the well, almost all of the subcategories of the Children's Book Council Awards for Australia. And I'm going to go through each of the shortlists, which contain six books in each category. I'm still waiting on one book, which may push out two categories until July, which is unfortunate because what happens with these awards is that some of these books end up being reprinted, mostly because they want to put that sticker that you can't remove off the front cover, but also because a lot of these books have been out for nearly 12 months. So they're sitting right in between their reprint runs. And uh, yeah, it can be... A little bit tricky to get copies of some of the books. But as always I'm going to start off by reading you the description of the category. So for Picture Book of the Year the entries in this category should be outstanding books of the picture book genre in which the author and illustrator achieve artistic and literary unity or in wordless picture books where the story theme or concept is unified through the illustrations. And the books in this category can be for readers between the ages of 0 to 18 years. So some of the books are definitely meant for older readers. So these are the six books and I think I'm going to go through them potentially in order from my least favourite to my favourite books. Which is not to say that the, my least favourite books are not good picture books, they're just in this category the books that I perhaps didn't connect with as much. So we're going to start off with That Bird Has Arms by Kate and Joel Temple and illustrated by Niharika Huku and Rona Joey Gosh. And I hate putting this at the bottom of my pile because I actually really like Kate and Joel's writing style. And this one is about Roy, who is a bird who is a regular bird in every way, except for the fact that he has arms, which basically makes him a bit of a pariah amongst other birds who ridicule him. This book really is about being different and how you fit in and how 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 your identity and your pride in yourself can help you overcome people not recognizing the strengths that you have. So it has a really great message and the illustrations are super quirky because you have birds with arms. The bird is you know able to do things that other birds can't do which is really cool. But I don't know I think at the end of the day this one just didn't resonate as much with me. Like it's still fun and it's definitely not a bad read. It's certainly not the worst book that I've ever read. I actually I did enjoy it but compared to some of the other books in this category it was sort of sitting sort of at the end of this pile. Then there's If I Was a Horse by Sophie Blackall. Now Sophie Blackall was in this category last year as well and I was so excited to read this one and I don't think this one quite lived up to the previous book which was The Farmhouse. It still has her gorgeous illustration style, it's still a really fun story and it's very much about a character or a child who is exploring what their life would be like if they were a child. So they wouldn't have to have a bath or they wouldn't have to do this or they could go running and galloping wherever they like at any point during the day. Like it is a beautiful book but still not my favourite from this list. Then there is Paper Flower Girl by Marguerite Lamond and Matea Jaeger which is an incredibly stunning book. This book is absolutely visually gorgeous. Just look at these end papers. So this is about a female protagonist who creates the most beautiful flowers out of paper. So much so that the giant from the hill decides that she's going to spend her time making these paper flowers for him. But over time his requests evolve and eventually she finds herself making things that she's not happy to be making. And this obviously makes her quite sad and so she ends up leaving. This one is definitely written for older readers. There's a lot more to unpack in this story. Like you can obviously see the nods to something like Jack and the Beanstalk in this story but the messages and the themes within it I think are much better suited to an older audience to unpack. As I said visually it's stunning. You could absolutely read it to younger readers but I don't think they would take away as much from it as someone who has a lot of a lot more life experience and can link what is happening to things in life. It is a gorgeous book though. Then there is Bowerbird Blues by Aura Parker. This one is actually also the National Simultaneous Storytime book for 2024 which is this week. It's actually tomorrow and that means that schools and libraries and uh, kindergartens and places where books are shared all the time will be reading this book on Wednesday the 22nd of May. This is the story of a bowerbird who is collecting and finding all of the amazing blue things. So for those of you who don't know, bow birds love to collect things that are blue and they create intricate nests that they use to attract a mate. And this book is a celebration of that as this bow bird goes in search of the bluest of blue things and finds itself caught up in all sorts of antics from trying to catch the sky and flying too high to ending up in the ocean but finding all of these incredible things. And the whole book is done in beautiful blue tones like it's visually. This book has been done so beautifully for its content. Then there is Every Night at Midnight. This one's by Peter Chong and I really like this one because it is about a young boy Felix who every night turns into a wolf and goes 
running through the city. And he's alone and there's no one else like him until one night there is. And it is their adventure and it is about finding friendship and it is just, it's beautiful. I really, really love this one. I had not heard of it at all. I'd not seen it anywhere. The illustrations in it are just so gorgeous. And it's one of the books in the category that you could definitely read in a primary school and still get a lot, huge amount of value out of it as opposed to being written for older readers. Plus, like I said, it's beautifully illustrated and I love the darker palette because it all takes place at night. And then finally, my favorite book, and this will be of no surprise to anyone because I've talked about it a lot this year. I talked about it when I first reviewed it and I also talked about it in my Kelly Canby deep dive and that is Timeless. This is her most recent release and this book is just gorgeous. It is about time. It is about finding time for the things that are important to you in your life and about a boy who is trying to find out how to get more time even when it is elusive. And the whole book is just a visual feast. I mean look at the colors and the art style on here. Like that's the whole way through the book. It is so vibrant and colorful. The language choice and the word choice in here is stunning and it just plays with all of the idioms and phrases that use time. So in time after time, day after day, until eventually there was simply no time at all. People were running out of time or losing track of it or letting it slip through their fingers. And the way that this book uses all of those to tell its narrative story from start to finish is incredible. I think it is the most cleverly written of all of the books on here. It is full of amazing puns and I won't lie, I'm going to be really, really sad if this doesn't win because this book captured my heart last year and I have been recommending it left, right and center ever since. So those are the 2024 Picture Book of the Year shortlist titles. I will leave them linked down below if you wanna find out any more information about them, you can. In the comments, I'd love to know if you've read any of them or if you have a prediction about which one you think will win. I would like Timeless to win. I have a sneaking suspicion that possibly Paper Flower Girl will win, but like I said, Timeless is where it's at for me. I, I would really love that one to win, but we shall see in August. Thank you very much for watching, as I said, let me know if you've read any of them or if you're planning on picking any of them up. Otherwise, feel free to leave any kind of blue emoji because let's go with the Bowbird Blues theme. Feel free to leave any kind of blue emoji down below. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.